Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off Grid Knives Rhino in uh, OD Green and Stonewashed. I have actually already reviewed the Rhino. It is a great knife. It's a big robust knife that's teetering between what most people define as a budget knife and, and uh, not really like the high end production but like the, the more the higher quality and like approaching $100. Um, so I gave this knife a good review and spoiler alert, I'm still going to give this knife a good review. This is the same knife. It's just in a different uh, color setup. Actually one that I find a little bit preferable, um, to the other one. I will link this and the uh, black one down below where you guys can go check it out. The black one is a lot more expensive. This knife on the off grid knives website it comes in about $70. I'll link this down, you know, using my links down below. I don't know if it's exactly the same price. But um, yeah, he uh, he contacted me on Instagram and said, hey, I, I'm going to send you, he sent me the Scorpion, the new Blackout Scorpion. Um, he said, I'm also going to send you uh, the new Rhino in uh, Tumbled and OD Green. And um, I said, oh, yes, please. I, I love, you know, Tumbled Finish is my my preferred finish. So I was really happy uh, to take a look at that. So thank you so much. I'll show you guys here. Here's the box. Comes with a nice high quality box. I want to show you guys here. Uh, follow Off Grid Knives on Instagram. Um, there's their, their tag there. So give them a follow. Thank you so much for sending this. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some uh, cool stickers and some other benefits, there's of course a link down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Go ahead and do the measurements here just for people who didn't see my review or are curious about it. Overall length is coming in at it's about eight and a quarter. Yeah, just about exactly eight and a quarter inches overall. Blade length in this guy coming in at about three and a half and cutting edge, it's coming in at about 3.4 inches. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? The Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So it looks like they're almost exactly the same length, but because of the angle of the camera, uh, that's what's throwing it off here. The um, the Rat 1 is definitely longer. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. Um, it is, well, this is, it's the PM2 throw, the, the angle here throws me like crazy. The PM, yeah, the PM2 is just a hair longer, even though it looks a little bit shorter here on camera. I'm going to measure the Rhino again real quick to make sure, because if I'm off somewhere, that's where it is. Ah, eight and a quarter. Um, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Uh, Ritter Hogue is coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches Overall, how's the action of this guy? So, uh, I believe the OEM for this, uh, for these knives is Best Deck. I could be wrong about that. I am so sorry if I am wrong. I seem to remember that being the case. Um, this feels very, very good. It is very nearly totally false shut. I'm just having to shake it just a little bit. We're at an angle, but this, the pivot is very smooth. The flipping action on this guy is very satisfying because of the shape of the flipper tab and how nicely knocked down it is. The weight and mass of the blade, if you didn't notice from the size comparison, uh, this is a big knife. This is a, not a thick knife, not, a, not necessarily an overly chunky knife. It's just very tall. Very There's a lot of knife uh, in the hand here, and it's, it's very comfortable. But the um, sound that it makes and the action and the flipper tab and how much leverage you're able to get on that flipper tab, how easy it is to disengage the smoothness, all of those together just create for a really, really satisfying action. And this knife is priced a bit higher than, than lots of other G10 and D, before people do, there's always, I can get G10 and D2 for 25 bucks from Gonzo. All right, but a Gonzo knife doesn't take the same form. I've handled, I've handled tons of Gonzos and I know that people are still, they really like, I am not interested in Gonzo's, just so anybody, just to go off on a little tangent here, I'm not interested. They've they've got too many designs that just are, are you know, the mashups of Spyderco and Benchmade. Um, the fit and finish is okay, but it's not quite as good. I don't get the same feeling of quality. I've, I've handled too many. My mind's not going to be changed there. I don't care if they cost one third what this costs. Having handled this and many, many other knives that are, you know, in this sub $100 zone, I'd rather spend more money and get something like this than spend 20 to 30 bucks or 40 bucks and get a Gonzo. There's just, there's too much out there that I, that I like a million times more. So 
Uh, anyways, but yeah, this feels really good. This definitely does feel like there's a little extra going into it versus a lot of those other actually great knives like we're talking about CJRBs and, and some of the Civivis that cost between $30 and $50. It feels like there's just a little bit extra here, but it is kind of an X Factor thing. It is kind of like a, you know, phantom -y. I'm not really sure exactly what it is that is, you know, it just feels... I don't know, extra polished. And uh, maybe that is what the extra money is going into, the extra work that makes sure, you know, that goes into a knife like this and, and that they just make sure that every last little uh, area and corner is knocked down and polished up, right? I don't know. The action feels really, really good. The detent is nice and clicky. I'll show you guys real quick. Click. That's what I like to, that's what I like to feel. Uh, really, really nice. Um, carry profile. Uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. You can see there it is definitely a little bit thicker, not crazy. In terms of length and height, up against the Pair 3 and PM2, two knives that have awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about. You can see there it is both longer, uh, well, maybe about the same length as PM2 in terms of handle. Uh, it's longer than the Pair 3. It's definitely taller than both, especially with the addition of the flipper tab. That's really going to be the killing point for some people, is it is a wide object in the pocket. And that it's one of the few on this channel where I'm actually saying, you know, yeah, with the flipper tab, um, it is actually taller than the PM2, and therefore it is. It's just going to be a bit awkward for some people. For me, it's not. It's not bad. Um, it doesn't bother me too much, but it, I can definitely understand why it might bother some people. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness on this guy. I know this is a lot of stuff I did in the original review. Second half of the review is going to go much faster than normal, but I got to get the stats for people who want to take a look. Blade stock thickness on this guy coming in at about 140 thousandths, which honestly seems a bit thick. I thought that it was going to be not quite as thick as that. We'll measure it again. Yeah, 100, 138, 140 thousandths, something like that. So similar to the PM2. On the inside here, we are looking at, you can pick up my flashlight, the flashlights that I use uh, in the description. Um, can we get, there we go. Can we see in there? There is some milling on the inside there. A little bit, which is nice. I think that this is a type of knife that definitely benefits from that. So we are looking at 140 thousandths of uh, D2 in this case. Um, and it is uh, quite, a, quite a big blade. This is a heavy knife coming in at 6.49 ounces, which is the absolute peak of weight that I um, am comfortable carrying. And this is about as thick and as long as a knife as I like to carry too. This is a, this is about the limit, you know. Uh, in some cases, I'll carry a knife that's a little bit longer, maybe up to 8.5 inches. Um, but uh, yeah, this is about the peak. Um, but I gotta say, I carried this around in jeans uh, for a few days and it's just, you know, after, uh, initially right away in the morning, I was like, yeah, it's a big, a big knife in there. Um, but after about 30 minutes or so, I adapted to it and it just, became, you know, a part of my pocket. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about it. And I think just the overall, they, they packed a lot of knife, a lot of big knife into a pretty good package. Um, and it does carry pretty well. The pocket clip really does aid to that. This is a pretty darn good pocket clip. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, let's see here. We did way, we did the, oh, we didn't do the hardware check. Let's go ahead and do that here real quick. Get out my tools. Uh, the tools that I use, you can also be found in the description. They are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Uh, let's go ahead and use the T8. Pivot here is T8. And guess what? The body screws are also T8, which is wonderful. Talked with uh, talked with him about that, the gentleman from Off Grid Knives, and uh, I was so so excited. I, I can't remember if the uh, Rhino, the original Rhino, is also T8. This one definitely is. That's great. There are three body screws, which is one more than I generally like. But honestly, I'll take three body screws on each side that are T8 over two body screws on each side that are T6, just to not have to deal with those itty bitty teeny tiny heads. I do not like T6. Uh, they strip uh, easier than T8 heads and the bits also, the teeth. Yes, even if they're WIA or super high quality bits, they, they're they they're easier to to um, bend and break, break out and strip out than uh, the T8 bits. Um, that's just, that's my experience. So anyways, uh, fantastic. So moving on to what is normally the meat and potatoes of the review. Um, this is an ergonomic knife, very ergonomic. It is very secure in the hand. Um, the, uh, the jimping here on the ramp is great. Um, I mean, it's everything that I said in the previous review. This knife is tall enough to where it does get nice and thin behind the edge. Um, pretty uh, good reinforced tip out here. The blade is just beautiful. All the, these corners and things are knocked down thanks to the tumbling. And honestly, I think the chamfering is present even on the other guy. But 
This tumbled finish, what they, I'm trying to get my fingerprints off here. The tumbling on this is just wonderful. This is a, a tumble, a tumbling that I, I would accept on a much more, like if I bought a, uh, in fact, I've got five, $600 knives that have very similar finishes on the blade and it's still, it's beautiful. Um, this is a finish that I would accept on just about any price range of knife if I was going for a, a tumbled finish. It's just really, really nice. That fine grain structure, that slight refle reflectivity, just beautiful. And the blade, uh, the actual cutting edge is perfectly uh, even on both sides, no wonkiness. Uh, there were no nicks or rolls or anything like that. The blade is just great. There's nothing in the cutting path. This is a blade that is ready to go to work. This is a, a knife that, you know, when I throw it in my pocket, it just feels like I'm ready for whatever. You know, I probably will only be using it to open packages and letters throughout the day. But, you know, if uh, there was there was one time where we had a guy with a flatbed who had, had, had used this big thick strap and cranked it down so hard that he couldn't get it to release no matter what we did. And he just decided I'm going to have to cut it. And I had a larger knife on me um, and uh, I, it went through it no problem. And that might be one of the heaviest tasks that I would commonly use a knife for, an example of, of a task like that. Um, and in that case, I'd be happy to have something like this on me. But for those of you who do tasks like that on a more regular basis, you're going to be real happy with this. This is going to do exactly what you expect it to do. And it's going to do it. It's going to be a dependable cutting tool. Um, I like how the uh, show side pivot looks. That's great. Corners and everything nicely knocked down. The texturing right here is great. It adds a little bit of uh, visual flair and at the same time it uh, offers some actual um, grip without being too harsh or anything like that. The liners look great. The black liners in this case I think look great up against um, the OD green. Uh, this is one of the few times where I would prefer the black hardware over um, the satin finished or the tumbled hardware. I think it actually looks better like this so that's nice. Um, the uh, liner is uh, easy to disengage and engage. There's no double clutch or anything like that. It's just great. No no issues with that whatsoever. Flipper tab, nicely knocked down despite having some jimping on there. It's nicely, you know, the corners and edges are all knocked down. Landing zone's good. Backspacer's G10. It matches the OD green. Uh, that's fine. There is uh, no hint of a lanyard hole in this, and that's great. We don't need it. It's not on there. That's awesome. Pocket clip is pretty darn good. We've got pocket clip. It, it is deep carry. Um, and it does uh, look like it goes goes along with the knife. It looks nice. Uh, carries it at a, at a nice angle. No issue there. Uh, screws are not recessed. So you might fight that a little bit. And this has the, you know, it kind of up and, and straight over instead of the swoop that I like. But it's fine. You might fight it on the pockets of, uh, you know, really like if the seams of your pocket are really thick, you might fight it just a little bit, but it's fine. Pulling in and out of the pocket, really, there's, you know, there's not really much to complain about there. Knife in this case is locking up at about 50%, uh, completely and totally solid. No blade play up, down, left, or right, and the blade is perfectly centered. What can I complain about here? Uh, it's big and heavy. That's going to be the main thing. You know, this is a big, heavy, tall knife. Uh, that's what's going to kill it for a lot of people. As far as big, heavy, tall knives go, though, this one you actually can, you know, if it's legal in your area, it actually uh, carries pretty comfortably. I don't have an issue with it. It's balanced well. It feels so good. The biggest the biggest reason to get this knife is, number one, if you're a larger knife person that still has, you know, kind of kind of like the large medium knife world, right? If you like big uh, knives that are still functional and easy to manipulate and you're really big into ergonomics and you like the taller blade, right? You can use a, a knife that is robust, but at the same time, slice enough to get uh, to, to get those uh, more delicate or more, you know, I, I guess if, uh, where efficiency is a big part of the, the task. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I could take this out and break down cardboard boxes and just, it would be great, you know, but there's a lot of other, you could process wood and rubber and stuff like that too. Um, there's just a lot of different things that this knife is, is going to be good for. It's, it's a nice versatile blade. Um, so this one comes in at, uh, oh, I wasn't finished. Was I finished complaining? It's got one extra body screw than I would like. I'd like to just see it with two. Pocket clip, I'd like to see the screws recessed. And I'd like to see this as, as a swoop and not not uh, a, and not as much of a bill, right? Um, other than that, I, I, was not, I can't complain about anything else here. It's just big and heavy. That's going to be the main thing. Price in this guy. So the, the black one, I checked on Amazon, and it comes in really pricey now it comes in at like 90 bucks or something like that uh that's definitely too high this one on his website comes in at 70 it's okay i'm getting more of a it, i mean th th this is a little bit extra versus a lot of knives that i felt in the 30 to 50 dollar range it's definitely more than that it definitely feels like more like for example like uh the the civivi praxis right i know this one's a 9cr 
So Vivi's got plenty of knives that are in D2. This is a great knife. It's very, it's, it's very high quality, right? Um, very functional. It's gonna, truthfully, it's gonna do, it's just, it's capable of doing exactly the same thing as this guy, right? This depends on your value system, right? If all you're looking for is just, you know, dollar for dollar, the most functional cutting tool that exists, right? Then, yeah, there's a million, there's a bajillion choices out there. We could argue that infinitely and get no resolve out of it. But if we're talking about the excess, right, the stuff that doesn't mean something to everybody, but it definitely means something to people like me, just the feeling of quality, right, the, the little things that make the, the action feel just a little bit extra, right, the finish on here just looks a little bit nicer, the edges and things, um, you know, being knocked down just a little bit more, things just feeling like they were they were completed, uh, you know, after they were machined completely. And I'm saying that the Civivi doesn't do that, you know, they just, it, this feels like a little bit more. It definitely feels like it's worth more money than this. If most people, they pick up both knives and they're going to say this one pro feels like it's probably worth a little bit more. And they'd be right. 70 bucks, uh, I'd feel a lot better at 60. $70, you're still going to be really satisfied with this knife. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it's still a recommendable knife. 100%. Uh, if you like how this looks and you can deal with the little things that I said, you know, were, might be considered flaws for some people. Then yeah, pick this up. You're gonna be happy with it for 70 bucks. I don't I don't wanna see it, I wouldn't want to see it more than that though. I'd feel a lot better about you know recommending this knife if it were at about 60, but 70 I think is okay. Um but these that black one on Amazon, 90 bucks. Oof, nah. Yeah, seventy dollars is about the maximum I'd want this to be at, and I think that that's that's okay. So this is definitely going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. This is really really cool. Hope you guys check it out, and if I can provide a link down below, I'll get that to you. I, I'll also uh, provide off grid knives in general, so you can see what else they've got. Um, but yeah, give them a follow on Instagram. They make awesome knives. I've handled a ton of stuff from off grid uh, from off grid knives that uh, I really really like. So. Anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Please follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that middle complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.